Open champion. What a session we're in for. Well, what an atmosphere here inside the Emirates Arena and what a final we have in store now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Battling back Frame admirably nine. from 4-1 John down Higgins to break. To make this a real match. It started as a best of 17. It's now a best of nine frame battle for that first prize of £70,000 and that magnificent trophy. The Stephen Hendry Trophy and, of course, the great man himself, the seven times world champion, is here to present that fantastic piece of glassware to whoever can reach nine frames. And what a start from Fu. John Higgins chasing his 29th ranking title, Mike. Marco Fu just his third in a 20-year professional career. And with reds like that, who knows, he may yet turn this around into a victory. Yes, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We're wondering whether they're going to get the start this evening that we had this afternoon. We hope so, because that was wonderful stuff this afternoon. But now this is all about business. Well, that could have been better. I think he's got the red to the green pocket, past the blue. I think he's also got this one to the corner. But uh, what a reception for these two boys, and deserved. Well, it's looking like he's taking this red to the corner. He's just looking for the gap there. Right-hand corner, this red then, looking for the gap with the cue ball. He's got it. It's only bang in the middle. Oh. Nice. I mean, the first red to get in was great, but that's, what about that for queuing? It would have been easy for Fu to panic this afternoon in the face of that early onslaught from John Higgins where he played nigh on perfect snooker for three frames in a row, three centuries, but he showed his own qualities in winning the fourth with a hundred break, his 11th of the tournament, incredibly. And then, of course, from 4-1 down, showed yet more steel to set up this mouth-watering finale. And for me, the shot of the first session, and there were many, Thank you. Was the snooker 50. he played on the final red at 4 2 down when the red was tight to the balk cushion? And had he hit it too thick, he could easily have left a clearance for Higgins for 5 2, which of course would have guaranteed Higgins a lead this evening. And who knows, it might have been a four frame one had Fu lost that frame. But he laid a brilliant 60. snooker. Higgins, the first to congratulate that shot. It was a terrific shot under pressure and it changed that mini session around. Now he's looking to move in front for the first time. Well, even Ronnie in the studio this afternoon, Phil, said that the way John started, that if Marco got out of this session 5-3, it'd be like a 4-4, but uh, incredible, really. Twenty-four. Might go into them here. If he just hits the pack, just left of the pink, that would be perfect. He'll be pushing reds towards his left corner. I mean, he could go into the pink full-blooded. It's a gentle cannon, though. Probably medium pace. We'll be okay. Well, he's got him full-blooded, but he's missed the blue. Marco Fu, twenty-four. Did he just take his eye off the pot there, concentrating on position? Pushed it to the near jaw. How costly will that be? One. Well, he had to drop that in dead weight to stay on the blue here. Of course, he also had to leave that cue ball near to the side cushion, but he should get this. He's on the blue. Well, 
he's played on the red near the top cushion. Six. I hope he hasn't gone too far. He still has the one to the green pocket. Well, I think he has. Just checking that one now, but the body language says he's not on it. So he's going to have to take this one to the green pocket. In fact, he's just had a quick look at the red to the right middle. I think he's taking this to the middle pocket. Well, I think it's more difficult to take to the middle than it is to the corner, but he's definitely lined up the red to the middle. Missed it. He's missed it. He's caught the near knuckle. Oh, that Higgins. will annoy him. That really will annoy him. What a chance that was. It was certainly a tricky pot. One. So Marco with an, an early expected, uh, unexpected chance, I should say. Once he, uh, once he missed that blue, he must have been fearing the worst. Well, this is the red that John was trying to get onto. Three. He has got a good record against Higgins. He's won eight of their previous 14 encounters, although this, as we mentioned earlier, the first time they've played in a major final, and therefore Four. the first time they've played over two sessions. And only their first meeting in a couple of years, so they've avoided each other for the last couple of seasons, but they've met at a very important moment in the season, the final of the Scottish Open. So much at stake. And there'll be plenty of nerves jangling out there on both sides. You can be sure of that. He's got one in the middle of the pack here to the left corner. It's not uh, dead straight. He might have to run through a couple of reds here to go into the black. Well, it's not bad, actually. Oh, 12. too far. Well, I think he was expecting a double cannon there off one red and possibly another one. Didn't catch the second red and he's run out of position. Can't really see him taking this black on. Just wonder if he's playing the safety. Gone for it. He went for that. Or did he? Michael I'll give him the benefit on that one because let's look. The reason I say that, just look where the white's finished. So I think that was a definite safety. And a 30 point lead in this first frame on the resumption. It's not the end of the world, Phil, if you lose the first frame this evening, is it? Long way to go, of course, but you would like to win it. Yes, and it would be Foo's fourth on the bounce. That seemed highly unlikely when Higgins was taking that 4-1 lead, very nearly made his fourth century in five frames. At that stage, he was playing impeccable snooker. Few errors since then, though. One. Now, he's on the pink, but has he landed on the black? No, so it will be pink then. The problem he's got here with his pink, if it's fairly straight, it's difficult to get onto the next red. He's just checking this red past the black. But um, he needed some sort of angle on this pink to sort of screw back into the reds. Yes, this is a, 
Well, this is awkward. But yes, you can take the six points, but where's the next red coming from? <coughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Trying to get around that red into the left corner, and I think that is end of break. Seven. It doesn't catch the red on the way through. He would have been on that. Just to safety then. But Marco has a 37-point lead seven. in this ninth frame, the first of the evening session. £40,000 these boys are playing for this evening and this pat audience here engrossed. Well, that would have been better for John if the white had gone in off. Because he's left a red down. Well done. One. He's on the black as well. Well, he can float this in with a little bit of right-hand side, hopefully cannon into those two reds near the pink spot. Not sure if he can hold for the single red. He's trying to. He's trying to, but... Ooh, oh, hang on. That's not bad. I think he's on that red. Yes, that definitely pots, and of course he, it, there's a little gap between the, the red and the cue ball, and he's playing away from the red as well, which helps, so he can hit it clean, go back for the blue. Well done. Nine. Good chance this to take the opening frame of the evening. And after all the drama this afternoon, Phil, this is going to be very interesting to see how the evening unfolds. 14. It's been a pretty big turnaround. If indeed Fu goes on to clinch this one. Fifteen. But that's not gone to plan and he's not over the winning line yet. 51 the difference, 51 on. Amazing, isn't it? All he had to do is get himself on the black, it's frame over. Beg your pardon, it's 52 the difference, according to the scoreboard, so there is a snooker required. Yeah. But, as we know, John Higgins very adept at laying them, so this frame isn't done yet. I was with you there. Mine were, maths weren't very good either. I think the scoreboard was a little bit slow to register the all-important red. But John, not out of this frame yet. Good safety from Higgins, good strengths on the cue ball, but he's actually been outplayed in that department today, which might be something of a surprise, albeit that Fu is very strong himself tactically. 90% success rate with the safeties from Fu to Higgins, 77 There you see it, just one snooker required. Thank you.
and the only danger there was that if he just flicked off the yellow, that might have gone in off. I've seen it happen before. And John will play a safety here, just wait. Well, look at this. Look at this. Not quite the snooker, actually. Marco can see the red through the gap. Won't be taking any risks here, though, just to keep it nice and tight. He knows he's got a grip on this first frame of the evening session. Okay, he's, he's caught the blue, but no real damage done. In fact, he's put the blue in a better position to lay a snooker. A chance here. It's a big bounce going behind the brown. No, hasn't quite got it. It was a good effort, though. He knew that was a good chance. John Higgins will need a snooker, because in fact it's not a snooker, because John can't see this right hand red. It's another very good safety though from Fu. Chance though, to get him behind the blue. If he doesn't hit it, it's not bad. Oh, that's unbelievable. Really unbelievable. What a shot that is. Well, this game isn't all about potting. The tactical side plays a hugely significant part, and you won't see many better shots than that from Higgins. All these three reds clustered down here in this corner. I mean, it, they're fairly big targets to hit, actually, but the danger here is that if he misses one, he could catch the black. Just the one snooker required, remember, for Higgins to potentially steal this frame yeah and even if he comes twice across Phil he, he should hit one here but there's gaps that they can go through aren't they that's the problem they're quite well spread I wonder if he's taking his time over this one. It's over a minute thinking time. Yeah, there's nothing safe really, is there, to come to his rescue if he were to miss? Exactly. Hashtag Home Nations, remember, for all of your views, your comments, your opinions. Seven times world champion Stephen Hendry is en route to the studio for a mid-session chat with Ronnie, Jimmy and Andy. Snooker royalty all together at once. Hashtag home nations for your questions to the guys. Well, Marco escaped the snooker, but he's left everything on for John Higgins. But of course, John still needs one snooker. So, they'll take two reds, two blacks here, and leave the third red on to lay the snooker. Well, 
Got a lot of support here, John, obviously. But Marco's got some good support as well. I think you mentioned it this afternoon, uh, and you mentioned uh, all the week that the, the crowds here in Glasgow, Phil, have been very fair, haven't they? They've had their favourites, but they've just, they're just snooker lovers. They're, they're, you know, it's all about the game. Exactly. They appreciate great play, and they've been very generous in supporting both the home favourites and, indeed, those visiting Scotland. Great to see professional snooker back here in Scotland. It's been too long a wait, really, but it's been worth the wait. Yeah. I think John's going in behind the pink here. Oh, he's under hit it. Now, did he get a con uh, bad contact there, or was that just a bad shot? Just wonder whether that white just seemed to stop. Let's have a look at this. Yes, that's bounced. He's got a kick, and it's taken the pace out of the white. And had Higgins been able to get tight to the pink, that could have been a missable snooker for Foo. 36 the difference. 35 there. Near a pin drop out there right now. That's a good hit. It's not bad. I thought that if he was going to just flick off the pink there, he could have left it over the corner. So 36 the difference, 35 on the table. Well, this could become the longest frame of the match at the moment. It's 26 minutes, 27 seconds. And we're up to just under 22 minutes. Great night to have a ticket. He's played one. I'm not sure whether Marco can swerve around the brown here. Might have to come off the side cushion. Well, if the pink wasn't there, yes, he'd be playing the swerve, but he could swerve into the pink. So he might have to come off the side cushion. It's one of those. He's got to get enough side to go around the brown, but not too much to hit the pink. Well, I think he's going to have to come off the side cushion. I can't really see any other way. Well, he's looking at the swerve. Oh, this is dangerous. This is really dangerous. Oh, what a shot this is. What a shot. Oh. I can't tell you how good that is, to put enough side on to get around the brown and make no contact with the pink. Brilliant. Could have easily underswerved that, could have overswerved it. Nice. Fascinating opening frame uh, for this evening session, Phil. Yes, one snooker is never enough, is it, when you're playing John Higgins and Marco Fu having to work very hard here to hold on to his advantage in this frame. Looking to win his fourth on the bounce. He's never been in front in this final. Very nearly got a snooker back.
was just wondering whether John might play the pot here, get onto the pink, then try and lay the snooker from the yellow. Nope. He's going to wait. The only reason I said that is because there's a lot of colours down that end of the table to, to be able to lay snookers. I was hoping just to slip past the yellow there, but not to be. Well, from Marco's point of view, the pink is in a better position now for him. Let's just remind everybody, John still needs one snooker. Nearly, not quite. That's normal, you'd be probably pushing this towards a corner pack, a pocket or something, but you cannot afford to do that. The red and the pink and one snooker would be enough. This is now the longest frame of the match. Just gone past 27 minutes. Yeah, so the last thing you wanted to do there was move the black. Now, oh, where's this going to finish? Behind the brown. Oh. Brilliant. Could have done with it being tight behind the ground, though. Still a great snooker from there. Well, it could be one cushion, top cushion with side. Yes, he's just playing left of the black here with left hand side. He's thinking about it. And the other option is two cushions. Tell you what, Phil, John Higgins so good at this, isn't he? <laughs> Within frames like this from nowhere. He's putting Marco through the ringer. Flew so close to his fourth straight frame, but he's not there yet. It would be a horrible one to lose.
just caught the paintwork. Oh, he's got one back. He's got the old Brucey bonus. And it's a rueful smile from John Higgins there. Sue only just connecting with the red, but it's a very good result. Just keep an eye on the red here. Didn't move much. But it was enough. Now it's John's problem. Yes, good hit. Oh, he's got the double kiss. This frame could be over. The treble kiss, in fact. Well, if Foo sinks the red, the frame is over for sure. But no. So on we go. This frame now 31 minutes old. Higgins still needs one snooker. Too bad for John actually because the colours are gathering in to that corner and they're in good position for a snooker. Marco has to be very careful. As you just mentioned, Phil, this would be a hard one to swallow. Just for a second there, I thought the white was going to go into the middle pocket. Well, this time he's chosen to take the pot on and leave himself on the black, but... Well, to get anywhere near the yellow, he's going to have to play a shot here, but he, he must make sure of the black. And then he's going to do is going to probably put the white in there to this side cushion and play the snooker behind the blue or the brown for the yellow. Well, he's trying to get a little bit closer. Not quite sure how he's going to play this unless he plays a cannon into the blue and kills the white. unlucky he just wanted a slightly thicker contact on the blue and that would have been full ball as it is Marco can get to this yellow off the top cushion just a touch of side on the cue ball oh I thought he'd gone around it yeah, a touch more side than he intended for sure but once again he makes contact, that's all that matters.
Not easy to lay a snooker from here. Just got to be careful, it doesn't leave the yellow one either. I'll tell you what, what about this? What about this? Unbelievable. <laughs> what do they say, Phil? <laughs> Quite difficult to lay a snooker from there. Well, it was. But you wouldn't think so. Look at Higgins' shot. Another wonderful tactical shot from Higgins. Trying his heart out for this snooker. Well, not difficult to hit, but I was about to say, there's a possibility he could go in off here. Well, John might pop the yellow and then try and lay the snooker from the green. He could get in behind, well, pink or brown. Yeah, I thought Two. he might play that. Now, which way will he go? Will he hold behind the pink or come across the left-hand side? I think probably pink is favourite. Well, he's trying like a bear here. The equation remains the same. 26 the difference, 25 on, one snooker required for John Higgins. Yeah, of course, he'll be looking to keep these colours on, or as many as possible. Hang on, hang on. Oh, I thought he's gone through the gap there enough. But uh, actually, he pushed the blue into a better position now. Yes, there's no way John wants to be potting the colours, of course, because it's taking uh, all the time, it's taking his odds down of laying the snookers, or the snooker that he needs. It's nearly 25 minutes since Marco Fu potted what was theoretically frame ball. But we're still here. Well, that's not clever because he's left the green on, obviously, and John might pot this and try and lay the snooker behind the blue on the brown he's looking at that just to stun off the side cushion and if he could play that and get right in behind the blue Marco's in trouble he could still lose his frame he had to make sure he got that green safe three Needs a bounce, needs a bounce. Well, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Stun off the side cushion in behind the blue. Oh, John, John, he's played it poorly. Oh, sorry, my apologies. He's got the snooker. I thought he was playing the brown at the table and got the white right tied to the blue, but he has the snooker. Clever. Higgins, well aware of the psychological damage this frame could do to Marco Fu were he to lose it from a snooker's required situation. Well, it looks like Marco's going to have to go up the table somewhere. Well, not only is this about the angle, uh, Phil, it's about the pace as well, isn't it? Because he could leave a free ball. And, of course, if he leaves it at that end, then John can play another snooker behind the pink. Apart from that, fairly straightforward. It's a sticky situation, for sure. Well, I think this is twice up and down. Long way, he's trying to hit the, uh, hit the brown. He's caught the pink, has he? Oh, what a hit. What a hit, that is. He's got a quarter ball sticking out there. Unbelievable.
Well, he's actually hit that about half ball, but still a great escape. <laughs> Nearly, but John's pushed the blue safe. I mean, the black now will come into play for the snooker. He didn't want to do that. Higgins would have had high hopes when he laid the snooker behind the blue. That could be the pivotal moment in this frame. Who remains the favourite to take it? Higgins still looking for that elusive snooker. been in progress for over 41 minutes and most of that time we've been playing for snookers clever shot well I'm gonna say John's a million now with the uh, where the blue and the black are Attempting to nudge the black, I didn't do so. Marco's got to be careful here. He wants to hit this brown thin enough not to move the black, but then the white's flying around the table. Yeah, well done. clever as well unlucky not to find the white in behind the pink but he's put the black into a better position A chance to cut this brown in, but will he play it? I think it's risky. Just wait. going towards that corner that's why he needed to get the snooker he has done but again easy to hit two cushions <coughs> hang on as he potted it this frame has lasted longer than the first three of the final put together when Higgins was making three centuries on the bounce but it's no less significant more so in fact if Higgins could somehow get the snooker and win the frame it would be a hammer blow to his opponent so far that snooker has proved elusive
got a chance here. Just a reminder, as we see Fu look to sink the brown that should win in the frame. But the Masters gets underway in the new year. Just oh. under a month away. Daniel anyway, Sullivan, of course, defending his title, going for a record seventh Masters crown. And Alexandra Palace, Eurosport, will be there. Marco Fu, four and, and John Higgins remains in his chair. Well, he couldn't have battled more valiantly, could he, for the snooker he needed, but it proved elusive. And that means it is four straight frames for Marco Fu, which is remarkable. Ten. Marco Fu to break. After a marathon, frame nine. But once again, it's Marco Fu for the fourth time in a row who comes out on top. John Higgins trying for all he was worth to get the snooker he needed. And he laid some good ones, but Fu was equal to the challenge. He's got great support here, John Higgins. Trying to urge him on. He's looking at this right hand red. Problem is, if plays the stun on through, he's leaving reds on. Well, and again, he's back to uh, back to plan A, I think. His long potting has been outstanding so far. Seven out of eight successfully nailed. Not this time. No, he needs that red to slow up. And it's come down and gone over the middle. Do you know, a bit of... He took a bit of time over that to deliberate which way to go with it, uh, Phil, didn't he? He looked at the pack to play the safety. It was a very tough pot. It was very straight. A lot of distance between cue ball and object ball. And Higgins has obviously not had the same rhythm in the second half of the final than he did in the first when he was racking up those century breaks yes not yet so far of course but uh, who knows he's going to get some table time of course to get there and I just wonder if you can get the angle to come off the pack for the black here he's got the angle just to stun over it's perfect and he can move this Seven. red away from the black spot didn't need to of course it goes past the black Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Could go around the angles here, but he can drop this in as well. This red's available. Well, he's chosen to get closer to them, but that needs to slow down. Unless he can get a, a nice cannon. Well, he's been very lucky there. He's put his hand up. He was on the one to the middle, but... To hit that red four ball like that. I mean, he could have glanced it and finished nowhere. And that's the kind of luck you get when you're in the ascendancy. And Marco Fu, who's put together a four-frame four frame winning streak, certainly is in the ascendancy right now. 
Yeah, take it while it's there. Thank you. I just thought as soon as he hit that blue, Phil, he's ever hit that. But he's still in and amongst the reds. Scotland holds happy memories for Fu, of course. It's where he won his first ranking title, the Grand Prix in Aberdeen nine years ago. It was based in Stirling when he first came over from Hong Kong, practiced with the likes of Hendry and Maguire. And now back here, looking to make history repeat itself. This would surely be his finest hour if he could come from 4-1 down against John Higgins playing the snooker. He has been in recent weeks to win the title. A long way still to go, but a 6-4 advantage. Well, what a result that would be from where he was earlier. Yes, this has been very impressive from Marco. He's, uh, like you say, Phil, the battering and the bruising he got in the early doors this afternoon, but he's, he's just stood his ground. Thought, OK, then, let's just see what happens in the next few. Forty-four. Showed a bit of steel in the frame before the mid-session interval after watching Higgins compile three straight centuries with a century of his own, of course. 45. His 11th of the tournament. And since then, it's been rock-solid match play to get him into this position of strength. Not what Higgins had in mind when he led 4-1. Nice. Lovely. Yeah, there was one frame this afternoon which we've already spoken about, Phil, when John went into the pack off the black and he knocked a red into the bright centre pocket. And then we thought, you know, things just started to turn around there at that moment. Yes, that was very unlucky. And at that stage, you would have backed Higgins to make yet another century. That would have put him 5-1 up. And, of course then the best Fu can do is beat two behind coming into this evening's resumption. But as we know, 51. it wasn't to be for Higgins. And Fu was able to share the spoils, which was a spectacular result for him. And he's built on that so far this evening. He's looking good now for a two-frame advantage. Sixty-six. So the lead, 66, 75 there. So one more red, and the best Higgins can do is tie it. Red to the middle. Sixty-seven. Well, a little gentle cannon into the reds here. And I think this frame is over. If he lands on a red. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, John Higgins will not be enjoying this. I mean, he tried like a bear in that first frame to lay that snooker. Laid a couple of good ones, but what a hit that was from Marco with that brown to next to the pink. Yes, and then Higgins taking on a tough long red. And his failure to get it has resulted in this frame winning contribution. From Marco Fu, it was Higgins who ruthlessly punished every error Fu made in those first three frames. And now a taste of his own medicine. Yes. And it's uh, John that's going to have to battle, but let's not forget 80. what he did against Judd Trump in the semi-final. 81. 
Oh yes, this final has a long way still to travel, but what a contrast in frames. The last one lasting nearly 46 and a half minutes. This one over as a contest inside eight minutes. Well, it's been a while, Phil, since we've, we've had a century. Greedy. It it. Yes, just the four so far in the first four frames. And Fu has been knocking them in for fun all week. Thank you. This it's will be number 12 if he can complete it. Shame. Michael Fu. But he won't mind that much. All that really matters is winning the frame. And that's his fifth on the spin, would you believe? Terrific stuff from Fu to punish Higgins' error on the long red. A break of 89. He now leads by six frames to four. Thank you. Frame 11. John Higgins to break. In the semi finals, John Higgins was 5 1 adrift and put together a five frame winning streak for a spectacular 6-5 win over Judd Trump. Well, today, he's been on the wrong end of a five-frame streak. Of course, the difference this time is that the winning line is nine frames, not six. But what a chance Marco Fu has given himself. Well, especially if he wins this one as well. That really put John under a bit of pressure. Unlucky. The pressure to John Higgins, well, he's a, he's a blotting paper. He just soaks it up. Yes, and he's been here and done it so many times before, winning titles from in front, from behind, putting together miraculous clearances under pressure. So nothing will faze him. But there's no doubt that Marco Fu is playing the better snooker right now and deserves his advantage. And the worst he can be, of course, going into our final interval is level pegging at six all. That takes a bit of pressure off. Three away from just his third ranking title. This looks pretty good. Oh, great return. Just look at the pace. And look at the stats. Marco Fu outplaying Higgins in the safety stakes. 93%. He's been successful with 55 of his 59 safety shots. That is outstanding. And against Higgins, arguably the best tactical player in the game, if not of all time, doubly impressive. Could that be the difference? He's got everyone on the left-hand side here, though. These two reds that are together, the one that's nearest to us, he's looking, he's eyeing that one up to go around the back of the black with a cue ball. Looks like it's a natural angle. It's the right on one of the two there. My apologies. He played the first one. It looked like he was playing the second one. What a fabulous red from Higgins. Again, he responds. He's a bit unlucky. Terrific queuing. He has been outstanding from long range. Eight out of ten, 80%. Well, I'll tell you what, he deserves something out of that, Phil, and not for the cue ball to land there. John Higgins one. Marco Fu will know he is a long way still from the winning line. He's had a lot of near misses in his career. Lost a final frame decider in the UK final to Sean Murphy. Likewise to Ding Zhongwei in the international championship. He's been runner up at the Masters, one or two other major tournaments. He's been the bridesmaid rather than the bride rather too many times for his liking. Just has to keep focused on what he's got to do.
<laughs> Brilliant. Well, I wasn't sure whether he was going to take it on or not, but he did. And it was bang in the middle. Brembo. Don't think the black goes here, so he's going to have to do something with this cue ball off this red, possibly for the blue. Just have a quick look at the pink. He's got an angle. He can nudge into the pink here. Yes, he has. He could push the pink towards the middle pocket. Chose to go for the blue instead. It's fair enough. Now, he'd like to get on the red. Yeah. It's just left of the black uh, in such a way to move or well, disturb red and black. It's been a while since he's been in amongst them, since that break of 78 to put him 4-1 in front. Higgins, highest contribution, just 32 in the last five frames. Quite a contrast from the first mini-session. This looks pretty good to me. He can screw back into this red and release the black. Well, well played. Nicely done as well. 19. <laughs> 20. Still got the one loose red before he has to disturb anything. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we've done that slightly. We might take the green here because there's a small gap between the pink and the reds. And uh, if he's attacking them from that side cushion, it might be a better angle to come from. Yeah, he'll go in with a little bit of power here, but if you can just find that gap, they should uh, split nicely. This could be a key shot. Oh, perfect. Unlucky. 51. Not for the first time in the last couple of frames or so. Higgins out of luck. Couldn't have hit that any better. Right into the heart of the cluster. Hmm. Not happy. Deserved more. He's got this red to the left middle, but this is really tricky. Just look at that. He's gone for it. Ooh. Unlucky. Join Higgins, tough to one. I think he's got it covered actually with the brown. And also this one down in the corner is covered, so he's done quite well there. Well, he must have been thinking from the green he'd land on something. Yes, he just caught the pink first, didn't he? Which ultimately meant that he wasn't on anything straightforward, but very unlucky not to land on something. Still a 32-point lead as he looks to stop the rot here after five frames in a row for his opponent.
Well, I didn't think it was going to get there. And now that it, it has, it's very good. Marco's point of view, it'd, it'd like a re rack but I can't see that happening. Touching ball. It's been declared a touching ball. Now, he's tempting Marco with the red to the left middle. He's trying to lay the trap. Will he take the bait? I think he's playing away here for safety, but he's got to cover that red over the middle. Well, again, my apologies. He's gone for the pot. Unbelievable. I didn't think he'd go for that, Phil. What a fabulous red that was. Yeah. I knew he'd be leaving stuff for Higgins there. Well, that's the reason why I thought he was just laying the white towards the green pocket. But, I mean, those are the sort of pots that deserve to win frames. And that's a real message to Higgins, isn't it? That foo means business tonight. Higgins set the trap, but ultimately it backfired. Yes, and John would have admired that one. He's done it on plenty of occasions himself. Six. Yes, we're just on a quick, uh, quick camera shot there. The black will go to the right corner. Thank you. Seven. Well, because it's, uh, it's fairly tight, you want it to be a little bit straighter than this. Well, that goes. He's got room there. Back onto the pink spot. Fourteen. Fifteen. Nice angle on the black here to run into the three reds. Watch them open. It's stunning to the other two, leave himself on the one to this corner. Well, let's have a look at this. Unbelievable, Phil, wasn't it? He, he thought about it long and hard, but got down, no hesitation, bang. From tight to the cushion, it was right in the heart of the pocket. Fabulous red, and it will be even more fabulous if he can conjure a frame winning. Opportunity from it. 22.
he's certainly getting right back in the frame. Higgins' early 32-point advantage, fast disappearing. He played a few of his matches on the outside tables, of course, Marco, until he got to the main arena. But everybody this week has been saying how well he's been playing. And this is the evidence. Top two one. Just black to put his nose in front then, and then this 11th frame. Nice cannon. Well, he's got them there. He can win the frame from here. Off to it. Off to nine. Higgins will be coming, be becoming concerned now. Marco Fu threatening to win his sixth consecutive frame. 46. Extraordinary. 47. And he's getting stronger and stronger. Didn't play that very well, though. He's left that well short 54. for this red. I mean, he should get it, but... 54. Yeah, well, look at that. They're all going in the middles. 55. Not touching the sides. Lead is 23. So he's very close here. Just another colour. And that final red, which shouldn't be too difficult from where he is. Well, it's only a break of 31. 59. Now, I beg your pardon, 59, but worth its weight in gold. Every bit as impressive as the centuries we've seen today, launched by that superb red. Frame ball. And he'll be on the blue. Oh, would you believe that? Unbelievable. How has he missed that? Frame ball. Well, it's scarcely credible. And it could prove to be incredibly expensive when this match is done. How do you get over that if Higgins clears up? One. Could have played that better. Uh, well, anxious moments now for that man. He, he had this frame sewn up. Well, I'll tell you what, Phil. We spoke about that, uh, that red into the middle pocket John knocked in halfway through the first session when he went uh, into the pack from the black. And that could be really important. Not red to the middle. Well, seven. it was a nailed on 7 4 lead, wasn't it? Absolutely nailed on. And somehow, Fu has not seen that red disappear. And it looks as though it might be 6 5 instead. Yes, he's still in front. But that is going to hurt. Ten. And it's going to linger, you would think, for a couple of frames to come at least. Yeah, well, it could have been 7 4, might have been 8 4. All of a sudden, it could be 6 all at the interval. And this guy feeds off any sign of weakness. 14. All the great players do. Still needs a good positional shot here, though, for the pink. 19. Well, that wasn't clever because he took the blue in the corner. That's why he's got the wrong angle on the pink. Now, he might have to go up and down with the cue ball. Needs the pink and the black, of course. To pinch a frame, he looked an absolute certainty to lose. And not only to lose the frame, but to find himself three adrift. 
And how he's going to play this, Phil, is topspin. So he's gone up and down the table with the white. Needs a good pop, but it's all about pace. He's got the pink. Now, where's the white? 24. Where's the white? It needs to go. It needs to go. Oh, how would you fancy this one? White, please. Well, I think he's got to, he's got to have a go at this. He's got to have a go at this. Marco Fu holds his breath. Let's do the audience. This is huge. He's overcut it. And Fu breathes again. John Higgins, 25. You know, that all came about from the blue because he didn't pot the blue clean. He put it in the corner and, and the middle pocket, and that's why he was out of position on the pink. Well, now then, Marco. He can forget all about that simple red if this disappears. Yes. It does. What drama. At the end of frame 11, it looked as though Fu had blown it there and allowed Higgins back into this final, but Higgins failed to make the clearance of the colours. And Marco Fu has won six frames on the bounce. He's now just two away from being Scottish Open champion. Well, who envisaged this scoreline when John Higgins was knocking in a break of 78 to go with his three consecutive centuries for a 4-1 lead? Marco Fu, incredibly, has put together a six-frame winning run and is now 7-4 clear and within two of his third ranking title success. Higgins had a chance to steal in the most dramatic circumstances in the previous frame. He couldn't do it. It was a very tough black. He overcut it with the rest. Ronnie O'Sullivan, of course, watching back in the studio. Ronnie, what a dramatic end to that previous frame. Uh lost that frame having missed that you know that last red in the middle but then john will absolutely be absolutely be sick that he hasn't been able to uh, punish him you know you'd have john's been clearing up for fun you know the last couple of days and you'd have thought that was a been a guarantee but you know when you're a little bit off your game you know anything's missable so massive massive frame i mean even if Fu had lost that frame okay he would still have been in front but do you think he could have recovered from missing a red that easy given what it meant the difference between a three frame advantage and just one yeah i mean Mar if marco's queuing well i think it's easier to recover when you feel comfortable with your game because you think well as long as i get another chance and I, and I quickly get amongst the balls and establish a rhythm again you kind of forget about the mistakes no matter how bad they were um and i just think that you know um but i, I you know what i just john just looks out of sorts here i mean even that last safety shot he's hit it thin and I haven't seen him do that um, for the last two or three days, you know, everything's just been perfect snooker, really. And um, he looks like he's really struggling with his game, which is obviously making it a lot easier for Marco. And finally, Ronnie, you mentioned earlier today that Marco's had some near misses in his career in terms of finals where he's lost by the odd frame. He's come mm. close but not quite got over the line. Is that now the final challenge for him to believe that he can finish the job having got into this position of strength? No, absolutely, absolutely. But I do think Marco, having changed his technique, he's become a much more aggressive player than certain shots that he's playing a lot more with ease. And I think that will give him a, a tremendous confidence. So I'll be interested to see um, how he performs um, when it gets to the real nitty-gritty stage. But, I mean, if John finds another gear, you know, he can easily get back into this match. Uh, and then that will be interesting again. But John's got to find, you know, he's got to find that, that, that form that he showed against Trump for five frames. And and how he played early on in this match to get back into it. Um, you know, just playing good safety and trying to nick a few points here now ain't going to do it at this kind of stage of, of, an, of an event. Thanks very much, Ronnie. Well, a huge frame clearly now for John Higgins. If he wins it, closes the gap to 7-5 at the final interval. Well, that's a position from which he can certainly win. Four down with five to play. Yes, he did it against Trump, Mike, but you can't keep reproducing that kind of form. No, as Ronnie said, you know, he's not quite on it here this evening. He has struggled from the uh, first ball. He, he nearly got that snooker, of course, uh, to win that frame, the other frame. But um, it, it was all about the blue. I've mentioned it, but the blue that played, uh, John played into the middle, he didn't pot it clean, which meant he didn't get on the pink correctly. And, of course, then he was sh short on the black. But he's got to put that out of his mind and just think of things ahead. I mean, if he puts, well, he's got this frame, of course, before we go to the interval. He's missed that one. Two or three attempts by both players into the middles. If he could just get this one on the board, go into the interval at 7 5, 
I think he'll be delighted that he's going into that interval, the way things have gone so far. Well, as we know, Higgins is rock solid mentally, but he wouldn't be human if he wasn't thinking about the opportunity he missed just now to punish Marco Fu's glaring error on frame ball red. And perhaps that explains why he started this frame rather scratchily too. Still no balls down. Marco Fu, so close now, just two frames away from one of the biggest moments of his career. The biggest since he won his maiden ranking title the best part of a decade ago here in Scotland. Well, that was about the best he could do from there. He's got the white towards the top cushion. I think he's covered the one over the corner pocket with the other end. That was well thought out and well played. Little, little tap on the uh, table there from John Higgins. Well, that's a mistake. He was hoping to get the white near to that back cushion. He's left John this red on now to the yellow pocket. He can stun down for the blue. He'll be going for this. Just a reminder that Higgins' highest break in the last six frames, just 32. Well, he dropped it in, got the cannon into the pink to stay on the blue. But uh, he made that look easy, but it wasn't. There was pressure on that. There's pressure on everything now, isn't there? As we head towards the business end of this final, and Higgins knows he's running out of wiggle room here at 7-4 behind. Six. Seven.
Twelve. Thirteen. Well, a dramatic end to the previous frame, of course. It started with Marco Fu almost unbelievably missing that red, which was frame ball, and I'm sure he thought at that moment, I've blown the frame, and it's going to be 6-5. But there's the shot on the blue, Mike, which meant that Higgins didn't get as he wanted on the pink. Yeah, and then he was undecided whether to take the pink to the corner or to the middle. Took it to the middle and then underhit it. 18. And left himself with a fiendish black under pressure with the rest, which he overcut to put himself in this precarious position of 7-4 down, but now looking to stop the rot. He's lost six on the bounce. He can win this frame, and this 90. final is far from over. 15-minute interval to come, of course, at the end of this one. Near draw. 24. And still Higgins struggling to find anything like the scoring power that he had at the start of this match and indeed that he's had throughout this tournament. Break fails at 24. Shake of the head from Higgins, who's really struggling now. And who would have believed that earlier this afternoon? One. Well, I'm at Amazingly, you know, his form has just, uh, just deserted him. Just a reminder that the great Stephen Hendry, seven times world snooker champion, will be in the studio alongside Ronnie, Jimmy and Andy. Three. Neil, to answer your questions, give his thoughts about the dramatic sea change in this Scottish Open final. Remember, Stephen will be presenting the trophy to the winner a player who gets nine frames at the moment. That looks more likely to be Foo than Higgins. Hashtag Home Nations to get your questions in to the Wonder Bear. Marshall Foo, three. He ran out of position there, though, Marco, so uh, John wasn't punished for that ready miss to the middle. When he went back to his chair, he just slumped in it, but Marco is doing that now. He, he cannot believe that he didn't get on the red from that blue. Red to the middle. Well, that's not his favourite middle at the moment. <coughs> that was some way off. Just get the feeling that Higgins' concentration, which was rock solid earlier, is not quite there at the moment. Possibly still dwelling on what happened at the end of the previous frame. Had he won it, of course, 6-5. Foo in pieces, having missed an easy red. It's a completely different match. Yeah, John's got away with that one a little bit. He played in such a way not to leave any of these two reds, but the reason I'm saying that, because the red knuckled in the middle pocket, but he's covered it with the blue. I'll tell you what, though, at the moment, John Higgins will take anything. If he can just get this frame on the board, 7-5 at the interval, who knows? I think he's left this straight red to this right-hand corner pocket. It looks 
wide. It's wide. Well, it always um, started out uh, wide, the pocket. Where's he found that one from? Well, that's some pot at this stage of the game. I'm not sure Higgins saw that one coming. Well, I can assure you, John's giving it 100% out there. He always does, but at the moment, it's not happening for him. You must wonder what's hit him. At 4-1 up, he was playing about as well as you can play this game. Since then, it's been all Marco Fu. Six frames in a row. Six. Higgins' scoring power has deserted him for the time being, at least. Well, that looks a bit tight. Might have to stand the blue or the book colours here till it comes down this end. And gets rid of one or two. Eleven. Twelve. Well, this, this is about to be seven on the bounce. Incredible. <laughs> got the left-hand one, which will uh, free up the black Seven. to that corner. You can stun down for the blue. Well, I don't think anybody saw this coming, Phil. No, it's a quite extraordinary turnaround, given how brilliantly Higgins was playing in the early stages. But you have to give Fu an enormous amount of credit. He didn't panic. He kept believing in his own game. And why not? Because he's produced some fantastic snooker himself this week. And he's doing so again now when it matters most against the inform player of the last couple of months. Well, he's taken these well so far. But I tell you what, just look at this to get in. John Higgins missed the red to the opposite corner. It was wide, and he was leaving the white there, thinking it was fairly safe. Well, it wasn't. Still looks ice cool. I'm sure there's plenty going on beneath the surface right now as he edges towards the winning line. And of course, he's going to have another 15 minutes back in the dressing room to think about the enormity of what he might achieve later on this evening. It's important he doesn't get ahead of himself because if anyone can turn this situation around, it's Higgins. We saw him do it in the semis against Trump from a seemingly hopeless position. But can lightning really strike twice? It seems unlikely, but you never know. 
and Fu isn't over the winning line here yet. 26 the difference, 51 on. It's another good pot. Thank you. 48. Thirty-two, the lead here. So 52. this red and a colour will be enough. In fact, that he needs the brown, brown or green. Fifty-four. Well, the yellow's no good to him. He needs a higher value colour than that, and uh, the blue is not bad, but he's overdone that slightly. Well, he could play the yellow and get himself onto the final red. But he's opting for the blue, which puts him over the winning line, barring snookers. This for 8-4. Looks good. It's all the way. Well, this great game of snooker never ceases to amaze us, and I doubt there's anyone watching who would have believed when John Higgins led 4-1 in the manner in which he achieved it. But he'd now find himself, a few hours later, four down with five to play. But that is the scenario, unless he can get snookers. Marco Fu, 59. 38 the difference, 35 on, so it is just the one. Well, that was a nice gesture from John Higgins there. He just tapped the table to say, well played. Nice contribution. Well, this frame is over. It's been a dream session for Marco Fu. It's been a wonderful fight back. And incredibly, it's going to be seven consecutive frames against John Higgins playing snooker, which is the equal of anything he's ever produced in his glittering career. He's not been on that kind of form this evening, but you have to give a lot of credit for that for this man who has been rock solid, ice cool. And now stands Eight. on the cusp of one of the best nights of his snooker life. Okay. Just one more of a possible five frames to be crowned Scottish Open champion and receive that wonderful trophy from Stephen Hendry, who we will hear from very, very shortly. Thank you. 13. Not a bead of sweat. 17. It's been quite brilliant match play snooker from Marco Fu to turn this match around in sensational fashion. He trailed 4-1, but incredibly now, seven frames later, he leads 8-4 against John Higgins. And when they resume for the final chapter of this terrific match, he'll need just one to be crowned the brand new Scottish Open champion. Thank From you, four down Jean. with John five Higgins left to play, be. John Higgins to break here in frame 13. It may well be that the interval has made a difference because he looked really rattled, didn't he, in the couple of frames before it, particularly frame 11 when he had that chance to close to 6-5 after Fu missed the, the red. Marco Fu, though, is a pretty cool customer. He's played so well the whole tournament. He needs one more frame and he's the champion.
Well, it's a good start to keep John under that cushion, bulk cushion. Yes, it's been a remarkable day, the way that John started and the way he's played tonight. Complete contrast. Sometimes, as you heard from guys in the studio, it can be difficult when the form goes to get it back. But Marco's got to finish off the job now. He's got to get over the line. Yes, I think the difference with yesterday is that Higgins had been largely outplayed and, and shut out early on. Whereas here this evening he has had chances and, and usually for him was starting to feel it. Maybe something though about this time of year for Marco Fu. The tournament before Christmas last season, last year, was the Gibraltar Open, one of the European Tour events, won by Marco Fu. safety shot there the problem with that is of course John can't get to the bulk end very easily with the red up there well he's found a way in uh, covering that red, red by the yellow Yes, from winning in Gibraltar last year, Marco Fu got an invitation to play in the champion of champions. And he pulled out just a week before. So, don't know what it was. Maybe he, it was tired or something was wrong, but uh, health-wise, but back to full fitness now. Of course, it, should he win tonight, he'll get an invite into next year's champion of champions. So far, we've got three players eligible. Last, The last win of the current champion, sitting in the chair, John Higgins being one of them. Mark King, of course. Mark Selby, the world champion, the winners since that event was played. looking for his third world ranking title in his first in Aberdeen 2007 the Grand Prix beat Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final in his second the Aussie Open 2013 he beat Neil Robertson so he does it the hard way Made that monumental effort, didn't he, in the first frame of the night. 46 and a half minute frame Higgins laying all those snookers. But frame 11 was the big one, wasn't it? After Fu missed that red and Higgins had a chance. Didn't get right on the black, missed it with the rest. to get round the table because John Higgins is ready to play a shot from that side. Well, nothing 
goes there. There is red, red by the pink. He could drop that in. It's not very nice. It seems at the moment the most likely ready to stick will be the one he's playing should he miss it. Oh, yes. Very nicely done. Fine. See where the cue ball finished. Well, it was a clever shot because certainly nothing easy would have been left. But he has got it anyway, so two different levels. It was good. He knows not to just wait for the winning line to come. He knows he's got to continue playing in the way that he has. He's got him in this lead. It does go to show you never really know what's going to happen in any sport. 3-0 up and 4-1 up. John Higgins lost all those frames since. Every frame has simply Three. taken a similar pattern. The thing is, though, Fu has played well in every round. He's had 11 centuries in the tournament. Right from the start, he's been in that groove that he gets in that's so hard to... Knock him out. Or he, there were signs at the UK Championship. He got to the semis there, of course. Just lost out to Ronnie O'Sullivan, but played superbly all week. Four. He's kind of slightly overhit that. He's not played Nine. it badly by any means, but of course with the black, not the best option where it is. And the natural angle is to run down towards the black, but as I say, it wouldn't be an easy shot. Going on to the top of the ball, playing with a, quite a bit of power. Ten. Well, that's an interesting shot to play on the pink, if he has played on the pink to the left middle. He might be on it to the bottom left, actually. <coughs> Slightly in between shots. in one of those earlier on pink into the opposite bolt pocket which won him a frame in fact it was the frame 16. that he made a century in the fourth frame got him started seventeen That's okay as well. Went right to the right middle. Pink still not able to go on its own spot. 23. Marco Fu, one of the game's great gentlemen. If he got ranking points for politeness, he'd be world number one. His family are back in Hong Kong, no doubt watching, even though, of course, uh, it's, uh, well, middle of the night there, but I'm sure his wife Shirley will be monitoring this. Twenty-four. John Higgins, of course, has his family with him here in Glasgow. Still hoping for a turnaround, but it's not looking good for the four times world champion. Sat in that chair watching Fu patiently go about his business here. And isn't it great to have Stephen Hendry here to present that trophy? Seven times world champion and much more besides. Twenty-nine. Thirty. 
36. I'm just carving out a little break here. Not really ever in perfect position, but just keeping going. I think he's made his mind up. He's going to just keep putting reds any colour. He's not going to worry. As long as he's at the table and staying there. Didn't have to go down for the green on that last shot. And that's not perfectly played either. Again, there is a red to the right corner, but that isn't the one he played on. He played on the red that he's closest to, to the middle pocket. And a favourable nudge. Again, I'm sure he played on the pink to the opposite corner. But uh, Dave is right. He, you know, he has played the best snooker throughout the week uh, on a consistent level. Of course, John Higgins has been superb in, in spells also, but yeah, Marco has been knocking in so many breaks. And I'm sure John would have been completely aware of that. What well, he's done well, he's soaked up the pressure from John Early. Because he was hit with a barrage of breaks himself in the start of this match. Four three in a row, three centuries. Yeah, he's not a showy player, Marco Fu, but he's really very, very effective when he starts to play his best stuff as a break builder. Well, he's number six on the all-time list, 4-3-5. Including the 11 he's had this week. And he's getting closer, as you see, to wrapping it up with another big break. And it would be... Eight frames on the spin. Who does that against John Higgins? Not many. 55. He needs one more red after the blue and he's champion. 50. Well... <laughs> He's still on it, but it's more difficult than 60. it could have been had he missed the brown. But this, red and John Higgins needs a snooker. Well, no, it's not that easy, is it? As you say, the shot before 60. was the one where things started to go wrong. And the way he was hanging his head there as if it was going to cost him the match. Well, <laughs> that is a long way off, but... It's incredible how match ball can add the extra pressure, and you can see it in that reaction. Yeah, I mean, Marco Fu is not a big reactor, but you can understand it because that was to win, that red. He put pressure on himself with the previous shot. Now then, John Higgins, if anyone's going to dish up, this is the man. And if you're going to do it, I suggest he gets that black in play as soon as he can. That's what he tried there. Now, what will he do? He, well, I guess he has to play the pink. But he needs to drop the black in at some point, get it out into a, either his own spot or one of the others. But he has to play the pink, obviously, now. I mean, if he can get behind the black, it's not the end of the world because, of course, he can drop it in and he's got the red up the table as his Seven. next one. Eight. I'm sure he played to knock the red out there. Again, with the backup red over the pocket. Fourteen. Well, one thing he can't do is take a low value colour. That is not going to help him. 
Otherwise, he's likely to run out of points. 15. Just another check on the scores from John. If he knocks this in, two reds and two pinks would do it. Taking the pink there gives him just a little bit more breathing space. This would be something of a clearance, I can tell you. And I always felt he would need the black in play. And he's taken high enough value colours, all the reds. And that's got to continue now. And of course, if he doesn't take the black, he'll still need to pot it at the end from where it is. And this really has to travel a little bit further. Again, he wouldn't have played it into the bottom right, but that's where he's going to be playing it from, playing it into. Sound of that, tell you a bit tinny like it was a kick that it's one that certainly slowed down the cue ball. Difference is now 33 points. Here it is again. It only just went into the right jaw. It tried to straighten up a bit, I think. I think he has to play safe here. Can't keep this going for much longer. Oh, I'm sure he's not knocked the pink in. Goodness me, that is virtually the end of the match. Trent Higgins, 27. That has silenced and stunned the audience here, many of which are supporting John Higgins. Well, as you see, it's, I mean, it's one to tie, but that's with the black, so it's effectively two snookers he needs. It's horrible for Higgins. But a very pleasant early Christmas present for Marco Fu, who had missed match ball, and, you know, he's probably building himself up to, I've got to put another one, now it's been presented to him. It's a good effort from John there to make the clearance. But like I say, with the black out of the game, it was going to be mighty tough. And it's got tougher. And it's getting tougher. I feel almost that Marco Fu, if he is the winner, won this this afternoon. Let's not forget John Higgins started the match with three centuries. He was 4-1 up, he was flying, but Fu hung on. Got out at 4-4. Four, four. He must have felt morally he was in front. Where's this red going? Oh, well, he's going to have to try and knock something in. It's getting worse and more difficult. Yeah. Of course, if he doesn't get to play the black here, he needs two snookers on the yellow. It'll only be one five-point penalty from the blue onwards but none of that matters if it doesn't go in oh, it's gone in of course it's done such a good play even Marco tap there in appreciation of of that Seven. shot Amazing game, right, Snooker, isn't it? He looked invincible for most part of this weekend, John. That win against Trump and then the early frames here. It's Marco and now. Well, he's playing way below that form against an opponent who's been very good all the way through. Well, the shot go on, John. He needs two snookers, of course. Yeah, Fu, you've got to give credit to Fu, the way he stayed with him this afternoon a lot of people would have capitulated there the stuff Higgins was playing but he he clung on he's got to get uh, something happening here I think what he tried I mean with the pink and black where they are it's virtually impossible to get the required snookers so he tried to move the pink and get the snooker behind the black he got none of those things
<laughs> well, it's almost like he's gone, isn't it? I mean, he's he's in a really strong position here. Higgins needing two snookers, four frames down. But, uh, well, what about that last shot? Yeah, the arm went completely on that one. <laughs> so Marco with another chance. I'd say he's had a, one or two big disappointments in his career. I think that for the Masters final, um, UK final, in fact, the one I was thinking about, where we lost to Sean Murphy, which he probably should have won or he could have won. So this will in some way make up for that. Yes, the yellow goes in this time. He's played superbly in this tournament. Of course, so many people here in Glasgow are hoping for a John Higgins victory, but can't help but admire Marco Fu, one of the circuit's quieter characters, but very dedicated. Yeah. And as we've seen here this week, mentally tough. 4-1 down to John Higgins playing some of the best snooker he's ever played, but he stuck in there. Well, he's going to carry on. Two. Yes, of course, the Masters finally lost to Dean, but with that UK Championship final, especially, and sometimes you have to lose to appreciate winning, I, guess, I suppose. I'm sure if and when it happens, he'll thoroughly enjoy the moment. <laughs> and why not? A terrific player. Good, great credit to the sport as well. Thirty-four in it, so at the moment Higgins needing three snookers. Pink and black not in great positions to say the least. Oh dear, well, he may well let Fu just play this out, but it's over now, surely. He'll give him his moment, I think, of triumph. A little smile, in fact. There's the handshake. Marco Fu has been brilliant all week. And here in Glasgow, in John Higgins' backyard, he beats him 9-4 to win the Scottish Open. The third leg of the Home Nation series. He's heading to Hong Kong. 11 centuries during the event. A brilliant performance from this man, Marco Fu, our champion in Glasgow. Ladies and gents, let's have your appreciation for both players taking part in a wonderful final. John Higgins and Marco Fu. We um, have a quick word with the runner-up, John Higgins. I never thought I'd be saying runner-up, John Higgins, after those first three frames. Um, you got off to an absolute flyer, John. Yeah, no, I, I played great at the start and. Uh, 4-1 in front, I, I, was, I was looking good, but Marco from then on just totally froze me out and he, he played fantastic, so he's one of the nicest guys on the tour and he deserves it, so fair play to him, fair play to him. How, um, how important do you think it was that Marco managed to win that last frame before the mid-session interval, John? I, th I think it, uh, once he got to 4-3, uh, if someone would have said to him maybe, even at 5-3 down, he would have took it at the start I had. But to get to 4 all, obviously, it was MD's game tonight. And then he came in and totally dominated tonight. So, uh, that was the way it goes. So, yeah. Yeah. We, saw, we saw you involved in a fantastic match in uh, the last round, the semi-final against Judd Trump. You came back, everyone thought you had no chance, so you won that one. Did you, at the last interval, think maybe it was going to be a repeat performance or not? Was it too much of an uphill task? Yeah, you, can, you still believe, you still believe, but... Nah, it just he was playing too good for that. So, but I'd just like to say a special uh, well done to Leo. Now the referee tonight. Now I think we all knew he battled a life threatening, life threatening illness now a couple of years ago. So for him to referee the Scottish Open final tonight, it was a massive occasion for him. So. And, um, 
And just finally, a word about your home crowd. What were they? Uh, what they like over the last seven days? I, I was I was gutted because the, the atmosphere tonight coming in it was electric, and I was gutted that I just couldn't really make a, a great night and try and get it down to the final frame or something and give them all something to shout about. Aye, but yeah, next year, I so. But no, they were brilliant. They were fantastic, fantastic. Commiserations. Um, let's hear it for our runner-up, the wonderful John Higgins. Marco Fu, Scottish Open champion. How does that feel? Couldn't believe it. Still can't believe it because um, you know the, the way John started the match. I thought, oh, it's going to be maybe it's going to be probably nine one nine two. It was possible, but um, I think in a very short spell of the match, I kind of um, dragged John down to my stand a little bit. The balls went a bit scrappy. <laughs> The balls went very scrappy. A lot of safety plays. I missed a couple. Got a few good runs of the balls. John missed a few. I think that was very crucial. Those three frames, you know, from 4-1 to 4-4 each. I kind of uh, fell over the first session and, and, and feeling over the moon actually. Um, but um, yeah, tonight I played uh, much better. Good good uh, match snooker. Um, I, I just couldn't believe I'm, I'm the champ this this week. It, it looked like a few times, certainly towards the end there, that nerves could get the better of you. You missed a red into the middle. Were you feeling it a bit towards the end? Yeah, yeah. I was uh, obviously feeling the pressure because I, I watched the semi-final. <laughs> um, uh, the way John uh, coming back in his jet, you know, so uh, I, I know it's always possible. So I just want to close out the, the match as soon as possible. But I just, um, yeah, towards the end, of, I missed a few. But... Um, John was very unlucky tonight, to be very honest with you. Um, like the little run of the balls, everything was going my way tonight. So uh, I think that helped a lot. Um, this is your third ranking title victory. Now you won in uh, 07, you won the Grand Prix. In 2013, you won in Australia. How does this one compare to those two? Very special, because um, the first uh, part of the season, I was really struggling. Um, but uh, like a few weeks ago, um, going into York, uh, the UK Championship, I was feeling terrible with my game. But I, I just somehow found some form. And um, I've won maybe 15 out of the last 16 matches. So I, I just couldn't believe. Um, I just turned around. Um, just like, um, yeah, suddenly it just, just happens. Um, it's just, yeah, still can't really believe it. It's a great win. It's probably, probably the best win of my career.